Hello Crypto Gang! Welcome to another Lambo Life video with Evan. This video is about someone who is a threat to the entire crypto space, especially to the top coins like Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. He is respected by a few, but hated by many. He's not very famous. He doesn't dress fancily. He barely has any recorded interviews. And he rarely spoke in crypto conferences until very recently. His desire seems to be working in the shadows, faded from view. He likely holds the most power and influence in the crypto space today. I'm talking about Jihan Wu, co-founder and CEO of Bitmain. In the last few months, it's been harder for Jihan to keep a low profile as much as he may hate it. A lot of news websites like Bitcoin.com and Cointelegraph have started to profile him as the world is starting to scrutinize this 30-year-old Bitcoin billionaire. Indeed, there are many other threats to the crypto market's existence, but this video is not about them. They are external threats. This one is not only an internal threat, but he is at the center of the crypto space itself and holds a lot of influence. It's scary. Before we get to the main point of the video, let me give you a short background. Jihan was born in 1986 in an unknown town in China. Little is known about his distant past, but he's currently based in Beijing. He studied at Peking University with a double major in psychology and economics. He was once an investment manager at China Grand Prosperity Investment, a private equity firm in 2009. Later, he moved to become a financial analyst. Jihan first discovered Bitcoin in 2011. While reading Satoshi's white paper, he was drawn to Satoshi's vision of Bitcoin that he decided to create the first Chinese translation of the Bitcoin white paper. He later founded the Chinese Bitcoin news website 8BTC.com which is still operational to this day. It was in this website that Jihan proved his expertise as he explained the fundamentals and value of Bitcoin. These initial efforts brought him to the main stage of Bitcoin in China. So how did this company start? In 2013, Wu met up with chip designer Mick Rijan at a local restaurant. Jean had pitched Jihan years earlier on an investment in his startup, but now Jihan is proposing to start a chip company. Jean's startup was struggling at that time. The next day, he called Jihan saying he was in. This was the start of the global chip manufacturing empire that would dominate the crypto space today. Jihan is the proud CEO of the ASIC chip manufacturing company Bitmain. To those who do not know what an ASIC chip is, it is short for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. It is used for mining Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. What makes it special is that it is extremely energy efficient and has phenomenal computing power. Compared to an ordinary GPU or CPU, mining on ASICs consumes less electricity and provides more hash power. For that reason, Mining on GPUs and CPUs became less and less profitable, forcing miners to purchase an ASIC to remain competitive. Bitmain produced one of the earliest and most popular ASIC miners, and this brought Jihan to the top of the chip mining industry. In February 2018, 
Bitmain held 70 to 80 percent of the global market for mining hardware and boasted $4 billion in operating profits last 2017, higher than the giant American GPU manufacturer, NVIDIA. Bitmain's private valuation is $12 billion. Of course, Jihan refuses to show how much his net worth is. So what part of this makes Jihan dangerous? The part where his company may be doing more than just manufacturing ASIC chips. Jihan has been accused of many sneaky and malicious deeds like attacking other crypto networks, abusing his influence to control Bitcoin, monopolizing the Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash hash rate, mining with a brand new chip before releasing the model to the market among many other things. This video is not about accusations. There is enough of that going around. Rather, this video is about recognizing the potential dangers of having this company at the center of the crypto space. Last 2017, before Bitcoin forked into BTC and BCH or Bitcoin Cash, there was a big debate in the Bitcoin community. Lots of things coming from developers like yourself who admittedly use Bitcoin about once a month. I use Bitcoin more times than I can count every single day. I've already sent more than $100,000 in Bitcoin transactions today I, I as know, part of my business. Bitcoin is becoming less and less useful every single day we, because we of hear, the network and congestion. Be, believe and if me. people like me, they're using Bitcoin for commerce and saving Bitcoins, I'm a saver too. I have a large pile of Bitcoins. If I get fed up with the high fees and, and easy, uh, easiness of double spending on Bitcoin uh, network and start using something else, this debate is still ongoing today, but let's focus on what transpired last year in the events of Jihan's conspiracy. At that time, Bitcoin had a problem. The network effect, which caused Bitcoin to explode in popularity, in turn became network congestion, where the network was carrying more data than it can handle. This made Bitcoin's transactions slower and leveraged miners to charge a high fee for transactions. They had to fix this through scaling, allowing the network to handle more data. The safest way to do this was through a soft fork upgrade into Segregated Witness or SegWit for short. This would allow backwards compatibility and overall a lot safer to do. This was the most logical thing to move forward to at that time. However, Jihan opposed this. But why? Seemingly no reason at all. Of course, the Bitcoin community pressured him to accept this. Instead, he pushed the decision to do a hard fork, irreversibly splitting the network. This posed a lot of risk and wasn't very logical to do considering a soft fork would do the same job with a lot less risk. He had a lot of influence being the CEO of the company that holds majority of the world's Bitcoin hash rate. But why would he do something that could put his business at risk not to mention the entire network of Bitcoin? It all started with Greg Maxwell's allegations. Greg is the CTO of Blockstream, a blockchain company that provides funding for the development of Bitcoin Core, the predominant software implementation of the Bitcoin network. In an email sent to other Bitcoin developers, Greg revealed that there was a method to give miners an unfair advantage over other miners. This comes in the form of a method called ASIC Boost, which allows a miner using it to exploit a design flaw in the Bitcoin protocol, saving electricity costs by up to 20-30% to while mining. 
According to Maxwell, and I quote, This could have a phenomenal centralizing effect by pushing mining out of profitability for all other participants. And the income from secretly using this optimization could be abused to significantly distort the Bitcoin ecosystem in order to preserve the advantage. There were two ways to use ASIC boost. One way was highly detectable and was not used. But there was another way which was extremely hard to detect. Allegedly, someone was mining in secret using the covert method of ASIC boost. This brings us back to the SegWit upgrade. Upgrading to SegWit via a soft fork was incompatible with the secret use of ASIC boost, but a hard fork upgrade would allow ASIC boost to continue as usual. This could have been the motive behind Jihan's opposition of the soft fork at the same time pushing the hard fork. You may ask, there are many Bitcoin miners in the world. Why are we pointing our hands at Jihan? It turns out that Jihan's company Bitmain actually has a patent for ASIC boost in China. Although admitting to ownership of the patent, Jihan angrily denied the allegations against him and his company. He claims that they are legally allowed to use ASIC boost but they chose not to for the greater good of Bitcoin. That they only tested ASIC boost but didn't use it in real mining operations. That there is no real relationship between ASIC boost and his opposition to the soft fork upgrade right to use it and do you use it or did you use it in the past? Uh, Bitmain holds kind of a patent application in China okay. for such kind of method and uh, uh, but the fact is that we have never been used it on the production of the Bitcoin mainstream network. Uh, mm -hmm. I think this issue is because that um, so there is uh, no need for us to use ASIC boost to be the number one, we're already there. It is no surprise that a lot of people actively involved in Bitcoin's development didn't find his reasons convincing. After all, as a businessman, people assumed that he was motivated by profit. Um, their CEO said that they put the chips on their ASIC board in order to do ASIC boost, but then didn't do it for the good of the network. And so they spent all of this money putting these chips on. The only purpose of these chips would be to do ASIC boost. But they only did ASIC boost on testnet, and have never done it on mainnet. So you can believe that, or you can't. Right? It, it depends on your perspective. But if you do believe it, I have a simple answer to that, which is, well, in that case, if you didn't use it and you won't use it, then you don't mind if the entire network disables it. And based on Greg Maxwell's calculations, Bitmain could potentially be able to bag an extra $100 million if they continue to exploit the ASIC boost's unfair advantage. And besides, what's the point of filing a patent if you never intended to use it or profit from it? It just doesn't add up. Do you understand what it means to have a 20% advantage in energy consumption? This is a huge advantage. This is an enormous advantage. And if ASIC boost is really happening, it will allow one miner to completely dominate the market and knock all of their competitors out of business. That is unacceptable. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I wish I could say that that was all there is to know about Jihan Wu and Bitmain, but it actually gets worse. Stay tuned for the part 2 video where I will bring you to the present day problems that we are facing because of Bitmain's existence. If you want me to keep making more videos just like this, be sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Till next time guys.